The Ice Worm is Subnautica's tunneling terror. Not satisfied with just hunting you down in its vast oceans, 4546B wants to make sure that no matter where you hide, you are never safe. And that includes on land. Clocking in at 95 metres long, the Ice Worm is the only non-extinct land-based leviathan that we currently know of on the planet. And despite this promotional art used for the game, the creature definitely can't swim. The Ice Worm lives within and burrows beneath the surface of the ice, and ambushes its prey by breaking through the ground and taking its victims by surprise. The top side of the Ice Worm's body is covered in a dark blue, almost black segmented exoskeleton tipped with orange accents to protect the creature's soft upper body as it moves through 4546B's ice sheets. This exoskeleton forms into a point at the creature's head, which it uses to burrow its way through the ice. This horn is the thickest part of the Ice Worm's body, and is covered in small chambers full of deposits of raw alkali metals, which react with water creating a glowing superheated tip which melts through everything in its path. As the Ice Worm digs through the ice, water continually flows into these chambers, allowing it to burrow through the ice with ease. The creature's muscles and bones are specially adapted to help it in this task, with the bones in their ribcage showing a high degree of flexibility, allowing them to bend inward aided by the creature's muscles to support its movement through the ice. It's likely that if the creature's bone structure was more rigid, its skeleton would deform over time due to the high pressures involved when moving around. Beneath the creature's horn, four large mandibles can be found, each part splitting outwards in a black curved structure, with each having a red interior covered in sharp teeth to help pull its prey into its mouth. On the creature's head are four bioluminescent orange spots, and these glow intensely alongside the tips of its exoskeleton near its horn. It's possible that this is due to the heat produced in this area of the creature's body, as while other tips of the ice worm's body do have a dull glow, these seem to be with less intensity. The ice worm's exoskeleton is split into two layers, with the second layer covered in triangular plates, each with its own backwards facing spike. These help the creature gain traction when moving through the ice by moving melted water out of its path. This movement of water produces a trail of pushed up snow as it moves through the ground, along with a flow of steam from its superheated horn. This process is so effective that ice worms can launch themselves out of the ground before diving back down into the ice in one single stroke. The bottom half of the ice worm's body does not have any plating, as this exposed grey-white skin is stronger and thicker and doesn't require any additional protection. This area contains another set of spikes called parapodia, which further help the ice worm to grip the ice when moving. The ice worm's body ends in a tail with two bioluminescent orange-tipped spines. These spines are similar to tails found on many creatures here on Earth, such as earwigs and are known as Circe. Circe can have many different functions, so the purpose of these on the ice worm is unknown, although one common use is for sensing low-frequency vibrations, so my personal theory is that these help the ice worm to do this. Ice worms are attracted to noise and vibrations in the ice above them, and this helps them locate their prey and home in on their victims. Whilst tunneling, ice worms can attack from below and fling their prey into the air, crunching them down with a single bite. If the ice worm misses its target, it emerges above the surface and lets out a terrifying roar before lunging forward and biting anything in its path. If after this the ice worm still hasn't managed to gobble up its prey, it will try another surface attack or dive back down below the ice to try and attack from below. Ice worms seem to primarily hunt snow stalkers as their main source of food, with the creatures frequently roaming into ice worms' hunting grounds and quickly finding themselves detached from the ground that they were firmly attached to just seconds before. But this isn't the ice worm's only source of food, because they also have taste for mildly frozen human if you get too close. But not to worry, with your handy knife, I'm sure you can fight one off. Just give it a swing and, oh, wait a minute, it turns out ice worms don't actually have a hitbox, so they're invulnerable and also unscannable. So you have two choices, run for your life or distract them using a thumper. A thumper is a deployable device that sends high impact sonic pulses down through the ground, preventing ice worms from surfacing and saving you from any unexpected flying lessons. Thumpers can be crafted using a battery, one piece of magnetite and a piece of titanium. Despite being invulnerable to you, ice worms do die, although what of is hard to say. It's possible that they simply die of old age as no other land-based predator that we currently know of is big enough to hunt them. Ice worm bones found in the area are relatively intact, suggesting the creature met a non-violent end and that other creatures in the area don't feed on them after death. It appears that the ice worm is related to Sector Zero Shadow Leviathan, which evolved as a result of convergent species coming together, although it's safe to say that this cousin doesn't share the ice worm's love of the land. It's also possible that the ice worm may be a distant relative of the Reaper Leviathan, as their tails do have a slight resemblance, but this isn't confirmed. The ice worm shares its name with a real-life creature found in glacial ice, although thankfully this version is a lot 
smaller and isn't eating anybody on an Arctic expedition. The ice worm's final design seems to have been heavily inspired by Earth's bobbit worms, as both creatures share similar body structures and are both ambush predators. The ice worm's head also has a very close resemblance to this image of a deep sea tube worm, which suggests it's likely based on it. One source of inspiration for the creature appears to be the sandworms of the Dune novels, as they share similar behaviour and are both avoided by the use of thumpers in their respective universes. The ice worm's design appears to have changed slightly during Below Zero's development. While the general idea for the creature remained the same, a number of different variants for the jaws under its horn were suggested, varying from two simple mandibles all the way to six that would retract when the creature was under the ice. Other proposed designs included tentacles that could grab you and your vehicle, and an entire cage-like structure that would be used to capture groups of unfortunate penglings. Personally, I think this cage-like design is really cool, and I'd love to see this used in a future Subnautica project. And it's definitely not because I want to catch groups of penglings and put them in my bioreactor. Hey, why are you looking at me like that? Anyway, we don't have time to discuss this right now, there's an ice worm right on our tail. Let's dive back into the water and take cover in that vent garden down there. But to make sure we're safe, you'll need to watch this video next, or we might run into some serious trouble. And special thanks to my patrons, Asmodeus, Mateus, Spinosaurus Studios, and Still Redacted, for making this video possible.